Oh, I was big on Curious George. <laughs> I decided I wanted to be a writer when I was seven years old. So it was only shortly after I learned to read. Um, so it would have been the, the very early books of my childhood, uh, Dr. Seuss, Where the Wild Things Are, um, and Curious George. I just loved storytelling, and I, I, I loved the way that words could bring something to life that was imaginary. And I'm still fascinated by that, still fascinated by the way uh, a, a novel, little by little, creates something that seems so tangible and so real, even to me, and yet it is gossamer, really. It's just words. And, and that's magic to me. And I've never, never got over that magic. I, I hope I never do. Oh, one of the first pieces I wrote was in second grade. Uh, I won a contest writing about our newly renovated cafeteria. You know, the new colors are very nice. <laughs> And uh, I remember uh, they were very ceremonial about this little contest. And uh, what you got was a chef's hat and a box of cookies. So I walked around all day wearing my chef's hat. And I just thought, right, this is the business. Um, I'm going to be a writer. I think it's important that I grew up in a literate household uh, because my uh, both my parents have written books, albeit nonfiction. That made the writing of books seem accessible and doable, not a distant, weird thing that other people did. Uh, so that helped a lot, and it also helped a lot that <clears throat> both my parents are well-spoken and uh, always uh, talked to, with their children using a large vocabulary. And that's a big advantage because I believe that the words that you learn when you're a child get deeper inside than the ones you learn later in life. I always find that, that words I've learned as an adult don't stick in the same way. I don't think I understand them in the same way. They're not completely internalized. There's a way in which uh, I have to recite a little definition to myself. They don't quite stick. So I was especially fortunate to be exposed to a a range of uh, more complex words, nuanced language than a lot of other children would have been. I show my work uh, before submitting it to uh, my agent uh, to practically no one. I will let my husband read it before I send it to my agent. But I've got to the point where I am less interested in soliciting a lot of opinions. I find that uh, more opinions tends to obscure my mental landscape. And most of all, it obscures the fact that the buck stops here. You have to be able to trust your own judgment. And it doesn't mean that I don't sometimes take my editor's advice. Um, but fundamentally, I have to rely on my own opinion of my own work and showing it to my best friend or you know, even to my husband. It's, uh, it's ultimately a fruitless exercise because it's all about learning to trust your own editorial judgment, which doesn't mean that you just rubber stamp everything you, you write. It, it, it means that you subject it to your uh, own fiercest criticism. But um, they're really, that's, it's one of the good things about being a writer. It's also one of the grim things about being a writer. Uh, there is no resort, really. Uh, it all begins and stops with you.